Um, what do I cook that's nice? I'll tell you what's, what's nice. If you do a proper carbonara, if you're a meat eater, get some... I mean, we should get guanciale, but let's not worry about that. Get some pancetta. Get some bacon lardons. Put them in a dry pan. Medium heat. Cook them gently so the oil comes out. Once they're just getting crispy, take them out. Leave the oil in the pan. Meanwhile, cook your pasta. Heavily salted water. The salinity of the ocean. It should be the same as the salinity of your blood. Don't use that to check. Then, when it's two minutes shy of being cooked, put the heat back up under the bacon fat. Actually, don't take the bacon out. I don't know what I was talking about. Keep it in there. Just turn the heat off when it's done. Chuck your pasta in. Cook it for the next two minutes in the bacon fat. While you've done, while that's been cooking, two eggs, one egg yolk, lots of black pepper. Whisk it all up, right? Then, uh, when the bake, when the when you've done a couple of minutes of cooking in the pasta with the bacon, add a little bit of pasta water with all the starch that you've cooked the pasta in. Mmm, very nice. Turn the heat off, let it cool down, and keep stirring it with the pasta water in it. Once it started to cool but hasn't got cold, pour your eggs in. Stir, 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 stir very quickly. Don't let them scramble. A little bit more pasta water. Let it down a little bit more. Ooh, also, when I said two eggs and one egg yolk, you should also put have put a metric ton of parmesan or pecorino, depending on how legit you want to be, into your uh, into your eggs and then that'll make you a nice carbonara more black pepper and cheese to finish Ooh, don't mind if i do um <clears throat> uh what else can you cook i know you haven't asked but i'm going to give you two other things to cook okay chopped up red or yellow peppers into quarters chop up four large tomatoes just in half uh a stick of celery take the end off take both ends off and then like crack it and you'll be able to peel it and these like weird strings will come out of it do that chop them into chunks like this big this big olive oil salt pepper bung it in the oven after about 25 minutes take a tin or like take this one really tin something. maybe even two tins of whole tomatoes or chopped tomatoes if you want pour them in squash 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 them up and get a big teaspoon of harissa Dunk that in there, right? That goes back in, and that blip away for like forty minutes. While that's happening, a little bit of water into a into a like a deep sided oven tray for some couscous, right? A little bit of water, and then quite a lot of extra virgin olive oil, salt, pepper, little knobs of butter if you're feeling decadent. Put some foil over the top. Bake the couscous. That'll take about thirty minutes. While that's happening, chop up a load of feta and coriander, load of couscous, tomatoey, peppery, lovely thing on the top. Coriander, cilantro, if you will. Feta. There's your vegetarian version. Let's discuss easels unit, shall we? Milk. Ah, thank Excellent. you for the resub. What temperature in the oven? 180 gas? Sorry, 180 fan, 200 if not. Risotto. Chop up a chunk of butternut squash. So you don't need to do it. Don't do it. If it's the first time you're ever cooking it, don't do the bottom bit with all the seeds. Save that for another day when you're feeling brave. Cut the top off. Careful of peeling it, but get the skin off. Chop it into chunks the size of a dice, of a die, like as in a six-sided die. Medium heat in a frying pan, olive oil. Cook it for about 10 to 15 minutes, stirring sometimes salt and pepper. Always season as we go. Layer our seasoning, guys. It has to be done. Take it out, right? This is when it gets complicated. Maybe 20 minutes to cook it all the way through. Onion this is quite an advanced. Actually, a Korea, this is quite advanced. Onions and garlic, as finely diced as you can get them. Into a pan. Olive oil. Medium heat. Stir. Salt straight away. It will stop your onions burning. It will allow them to release moisture. Keep stirring all the time. After about 10 minutes, when they've gone translucent and started to go golden brown, but haven't gone actually brown, put in the correct amount of risotto rice. Now, this is crucial. Don't add liquid straight away. Toast your rice. Just fry the rice. Might seem a bit weird, but it'll give you a lovely nutty flavour. Then, if you are a drinker, uh, or if you have wine in your diet, splash a white wine. Ooh, don't mind if I do. Previous to this, you need to have just made up, pre-made, don't worry about making your own, vegetable stock. Add a, a ladle of vegetable stock and stir and stir and stir and stir and stir. If it starts to boil, turn it down. If it's not hissing when you put it in, turn it up. 
Um, stir and stir and stir. All this time you're stirring, you're releasing starch and you're making your risotto creamy, guys. That's what we're trying to do without dairy. Then, every five, as soon as that, that as all of that moisture is gone, add another ladle. Don't drown it, though. Give it time. That's what it will do. Suck up all your stuff. Yes. Ten minutes left. Put your, that'll take about 20 to 25 minutes. Ten minutes left. Maybe five minutes before the end. Put your, uh, put your butternut squash back in. Stir it through. Little bit more of your stuff. Fresh parsley. Chop, chop, chop. Put that in. Parmesan. Lovely. If you want to be fancy, finish it with a little swirl of olive oil. Extra virgin. Salmon recipe. <clears throat> you know what I like for salmon? Pan fry it, skin side down. Medium high heat, get the skin crispy, then turn it down ever so slightly to a medium heat. Obviously salt, pepper the skin. If you've got a sharp enough knife, score the skin, don't worry if you don't want to do it. Plenty of salt and pepper, particularly salt the skin. Skin side down, hot pan, you should listen to it. That's what my dad always used to say to me, because my dad was a chef. What my dad always used to say to me when I was cooking, if I put anything in too cold a pan, you go, listen, listen. So listen to it. If it makes noise, great. If it goes too hot, it's too hot. If it doesn't make no noise, what are you doing? You're not cooking it. You might as well put it on a radiator. <clears throat> right. While that's cooking, five minutes skin side down. Then turn it on its sides. Give it maybe three to four minutes on each side and three minutes on the bottom. Uh, while that's happening, fill a pan with this much water. Put a colander on top of it and make sure you've got a lid. Asparagus. Cut the ends off. Like that. Get some peas. I'll oh, put them in a the microwave, mate. Two minutes in a microwave. Don't worry about it. Steam your asparagus. Uh, boil some little new potatoes. Actually, you should do that first because that takes the longest. And then, once your uh, once your salmon's cooked, just turn it off. Once your potatoes cooked, just take them out. Salt, pepper, nice knob of butter. Get your greens. Stick them oh, on the plate. Parsley. I love parsley, me. I'm like the Matt Mercer of cooking. All them sound effects. Right. So what the hell am I doing?